What are you looking for in terms of the top areas that need innovation and investment when it comes to climate and really, you know, stopping this problem before it gets to be to before it turns into a disaster? Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me, Emily. It's a pleasure to be here. I mean, there's so many areas within climate that need investment. So we're really excited about areas that blend typical sort of climate experience with new technologies. So think about material science plus artificial intelligence or software meets forest science or water solutions. So at Earthshot, we have some really exciting technologies and we're seeing an amazing influx of talent from traditional technology like Google and Facebook meeting up with people who really know energy markets, and water markets and mobility and building some really fascinating companies. So climate investments often take a long time to play out. I mean, we've seen some investors get impatient and, and move on to other things. How patient are you willing to be? How long term is your time horizon? Well, it's interesting you asked that. I, mean, I think the market has also just changed so dramatically in climate tech and early stage climate investing in particular. So we're seeing a lot of momentum and interest in climate technology and the speed of innovation actually picking up pretty significantly. I think there are really three key trends driving this. I mean, we're seeing enormous market interest. So thousands of corporations now have actually made net zero pledges and are buying climate technology. That's a huge change in the private sector. We're seeing alignment from the policy space, you know, all the way from local, state, national, and international alignment around climate. Um, and we're also just seeing this influx of talent where people are seeing climate actually affect them in their backyards and affect them where they are. Um, and so a lot of new talent coming into the space. And all of these factors together are actually accelerating times to market and accelerating technology's ability to scale much more so than we've seen in the last decade or so that I've been investing in climate technology. Some of your LPs include John Doerr of Kleiner Perkins, Chris Cox, the chief product officer at Facebook, uh, Emerson Collective, which is, of course, the fund started by Lorraine Powell Jobs. What kind of conversations have you had with folks like Lorraine about their priorities? I mean, we're fortunate to have a, really a dream team of investors in this fund who have a lot of experience with sort of both investing and climate and also working at the community level to deploy technologies in ways that are meaningful and can enable them to scale. Our investors are particularly interested in how do we find uh, founders and entrepreneurs who may have been overlooked, who are doing some really interesting things but may not have had a chance or had access to the same venture capital markets as others. It's something we're really known for at Elemental is being able to find entrepreneurs from, from some of these really interesting communities who are really focused on solving climate in a more equitable way. So our investors are really excited about um, finding entrepreneurs in unexpected places and then addressing climate in a way that is more equitable. We see climate change and social equity as completely interlinked and interdependent, part of the same challenge. Regulators in the United States and Europe are looking closely at ESG portfolios. We're also expecting some action from the SEC on this. I recently interviewed Al Gore and he raised the concern about greenwashing. Uh, what's your take on greenwashing when it comes to climate investing? How big a challenge is this? Yeah, I think Al Gore is right. I mean, greenwashing is a real challenge, especially from companies that are traditionally in fossil fuel sectors. I think the best antidote to greenwashing is action and really good solutions that are better than the solutions we see out there now using fossil fuels. I think solar is a great example. It's a better technology. It's cleaner. It's cheaper. It makes more sense than the fossil fuel alternative. Same thing is true with electric buses. You know, we were investor in electric truck and electric bus companies in the past at Elemental, and these technologies are just better than the alternatives. So, you know, greenwashing is definitely a challenge. I think to the extent that we are creating better technologies that actually solve problems, are more enjoyable to drive, are better for our communities, we can accelerate the pace of adoption even so. Meantime, your fund is partly based in Hawaii. You are based in Honolulu. I'm from Hawaii. So I have to ask, does being in Hawaii give you some sort of edge or a, a more unique perspective than an investor in the middle of Silicon Valley? Yeah, well, we are here from your hometown, so aloha. Uh, so I think being in Hawaii gives us the two different 
advantages. One is that we actually see the impact of technologies in communities in real time. So you know, Elemental started in Hawaii, it is now a global organization. Earthshot will be investing across the US and across the world. So we're by no means limited, but it does give us unique perspective into what does it actually take to deploy technologies and scale them in the real world. And there's also a sense in which Hawaii and Alaska, where we also have a strong partnership, are early markets who are seeing some of the early impacts of climate change and are places where we can actually roll out technology and learn things and get ahead of the curve before other geographies. So there are other wonderful geographies to also test and, and serve new technology, um, but we find that being in communities, being really close to customers has an enormous advantage for technology deployment and acceleration.